From the looks of it, you may not think this U.S. Navy destroyer is ready for the scrap heap. Well, it's not because we're going to sink it. Annually, countless ships are scuttled around the globe as artificial reefs. Nearly half the states in the U.S. border a coastline, and just about all of them have some sort of artificial reef program. And just about all of them are looking to get their hands on a vessel like this one. This former U.S. warship has been given the reprieve from the cutting torch, but only to be given the Deep Six as the largest artificial reef ever to be scuttled anywhere along the U.S. Atlantic coast. And these are the guys that are going to make that happen. Hi, I'm Patrick Pavlicek with the American Marine Group, and we sink ships. We're here in Philadelphia, and behind me is the former USS Arthur W. Radford, a Spruance-class destroyer that is destined to become an artificial reef about 26 miles south of Cape May, New Jersey. My name is Tim Mullane. I'm the last captain of the Arthur W. Radford. My company's preparing it to be sunk as an artificial reef. I've been involved with 50, 60 sinkings for artificial reefs all over the East Coast, but this will be the longest ship that we've sunk to date um, as an artificial reef. Spiegel Grove was 540 feet. This ship's actually going to be uh, 563. You may think sinking a ship is easy. Well, think again. There's a host of state and federal regulations that need to be met. In the case of the USS Radford, there are three states involved because it takes a pile of cash to put these behemoths on the bottom. The Radford Reefing Project is a joint state approach. It's just not being done by New Jersey. Delaware and Maryland are participating. Uh, each state is contributing equally to the cost of prepping the vessel. There's a lot of things that need to be done on the vessel and it's expensive to get these vessels ready. My role, as well as Mary and my wife, we are the trustees on the foundation and we donated the money that New Jersey needed uh, to fulfill its portion of this particular project. So no taxpayer dollars were used. Now that you paid for it, you just can't pull the plug and let it sink. All the nasty stuff that may be toxic or create a hazard for divers has got to go. And luckily for the contractor, some of that stuff can be recycled. <laughs> We, the taxpayers of the United States of America, have paid for and bought one of the finest vessels that can ever be put onto the uh, open seas. Uh, there's high, high amounts of copper, copper nickel, Monel, Inconel, and so forth, and these are all high value, um, high cost metals. We're able to put in a much lower bid uh, just by um, uh, basing our recyclables on it. The bridge level up. Uh, is all uh, aluminum and that needs to be removed first and foremost so that the boat has a, um, a keel to bridge level of 70 feet. So when we sink the boat off, uh, offshore, which will give us 60 feet of clearance for navigable waterways. Okay, release the water. Uh, it's about eight tons of aluminum right now and that can be recycled you know, into beer cans or uh, deck chairs. There's a lot of wire in this vessel. There's miles and miles of, of insulated wire. Now, one thing that New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland are doing differently with this vessel than was done with uh, the Oriskany and the Vandenberg is we're removing this wire. Um, the insulation around the wire may contain PCBs. We're taking it all off. Okay, as far as toxics in this ship, it's a relatively new warship. The keel was laid in 1977 and it was decommissioned in 2003. And one of the reasons New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland went after this vessel because it was low in toxics because it was so new. These cables are solid copper worth big bucks. And the fact that they may contain toxic compounds means that they're killing two birds with one stone by yanking it all out to be recycled. Besides the challenge of making a buck off the stuff they're yanking off of it, they're also on the clock. The longer it takes to get this rust bucket stripped, cleaned, and on the bottom, the longer the money meter's gonna be running. The meter for parking a ship this size takes a lot of quarters, and for every day it sits at the dock, it rings up a massive bill that comes right off the bottom line. And even if you're all ready to go, you best hope the weather gods are on your side. We're not setting a specific date on sinking. We're looking more for a specific week because it's not going to be flat calm. 
and where we can work on it, and where all the people can be out there in the different boats to observe it. You know, what's the point of it? Why risk going out in, in less than perfect weather? Having a crew this size can rack up a major pain in the wallet. So any delay of just a few days can make the difference of making a buck or going to the poorhouse.